Are you serious? We had another solar flare? Another one? Right on top of the one we just had? Hang on a second. And grab a Bible and turn it to the 16th chapter of the book of Revelation because I'm going to read to you some scriptures that does pertain to the sun. I'm Pastor Paul Begley. We're seeing something going on of a phenomenon. And here's why I'm telling you that. Two major, I mean major, solar flares back to back at a time when the earth is already in a 188 day earthquake cycle that potentially, we're, we're coming up on the one year anniversary of the Japan earthquake, which was the third quake of the 188 days. So let me read to you first of all. Here's an article. And I want to thank Jeff Johnson for sending this to me. Also, Karen Fox and uh, several other people um, have sent me information about this. Stephen of Oklahoma, uh, Rita of Oklahoma. Okay, here's what it says. Uh, breaking news. There was an M6.3 solar flare that rifles from the same region of the 1429. On March the 8th, on March the 8th at 8.37 p.m. Pacific time, now that would have been right around 11.30 last night here on the East Coast. Uh, M6.3 solar flare has shot off from the sunspot region of the 1429. This event comes on the shoulders of the March 7th Class X 5.4 flare, which has not yet completed its impact on the Earth's magnetic field. See, it's not done yet. It's actually not going to fully... As a matter of fact, let me finish reading here if his... The, annihil uh, the anal analyzation here of these sun flares. The usual time frame from solar events to impact the Earth is between 48 and 72 hours, depending on the magnitude of the flare. This means it will be sometime between March 9th, sometime on March 9th, that we will feel the impact of the March 7th Class X uh, 5.4 flare. Soon after that, within hours after that, the impact of today's, of March 8th, M6.3 flare will hit Earth and its magnetic field. So you say, okay, what does that mean? Well, the FAA is set to place a warning for all high-flying aircraft today to maintain lower altitudes with a ceiling of per perhaps 32,000 feet. All Air Force military assets are already on alert for potential damage of satellites, both communication and armed satellites. Also, the United States Department of Energy has been placed on full alert assessing the power grid facilities, the backup protocol. Yes, this is what an active sun can do here on Earth. What is less known, though, is the impact of the charged particles on the human body. Hint, one of the reasons for the FAA to place a low ceiling mandate is due to radiation. The second reason is the airplane's computer systems. I'm told that pilots are trained to navigate large aircraft such as 777s or 747s with a dead stick, but I hope it doesn't happen, folks. Uh, I was pleased to see all the major news agencies covering the March 7th event, except for one of the major flaws. Many of the agencies got their timelines wrong. They kept talking about this March 7th X 5.4 flare is over and all is done when that's wrong. It's not, we're not going to feel the impact of that one until, folks, later today, later tonight on this March 9th, 2012, we will really get the full impact of the... Uh, uh, X 5.4, and then probably Saturday, sometime Saturday, we, we may get the full impact or so from the M.6 flare. It's amazing. Two huge flares, both of them coming straight toward the earth back to back. What does that mean, Pastor? What does that mean? If you want to read this article also, you can check it out. It's on Earth Changes Media. Um, and uh, you can go to that website at uh, Earth Changes Media. Now, here's, here's the deal. I want to read to you from the scriptures 
Because there is, you know, again, I always go say, somebody always said to me, well, who cares? So the sun's got some eruptions. So the sun's got some explosions. You don't understand. These explosions, we're talking four times the size of Earth. Four times. So the, the you have to feel the energy that's coming, the radiation that's coming, the, the uh, heat from it that's coming. And we're not going to feel it like a physical increase in temperature necessarily. It's the wave that brings. It's the scrambling of our communication towers, our cell phone towers. The power grids potentially could go out. We don't know where on the earth. They would have to pinpoint that. But we definitely know we have, could have an impact. And here we are talking about human molecules. We're talking about the impact upon the human particles due to the radiation fallout. And let me just read to you what the scripture says when it comes, when it talks about the scorching from the sun. A lot of people think it's just this massive heat. It's going to go to, you know, 300 degrees and, and all that kind of stuff. No, 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 no. No, what's going to happen is what is happening. A consistent impact of flares affecting the earth, creating all kinds of havoc. Let me read to you what it says in the Bible. This is amazing because you have to go to Revelation 16. This is the same chapter that I was reading to you last summer when we're talking about the BP, the BP oil spill. What a significant events of the water turning blood red and the globs and the blobs and what have you on the, on the planet. And then last fall, if you remember, the Texas Blood Lake. Again, I read from Revelation 16 as there was some coalition there. Now we continue down and we start talking about the scorching of the sun. The Bible says in Revelation 16, verse 3, And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard an angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shall be because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Okay, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. Now, I'm not saying that the two solar flares that have just hit are going to bring in, you know, massive heat, massive scorching fires, like wildfires going out of control. I'm not saying that. I'm just wanting to bring to your attention the fact that the sun plays a part in the signs of the end time as we get closer and closer and closer to the bride meeting the bridegroom, to the coming of our Lord. Now, when you think about it in that way, you say, okay, so you're saying, Paul, there's going to be more activity in the sun? That's exactly what I'm telling you. Matter of fact, Luke 21, 25 says, For there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and distress of nations with great perplexity, and the sea and the wave roaring. You see, we're seeing all of those. So what I'm reading here, I'm not saying that these two solar flares that are coming back to back, that are definitely going to make an impact on the earth in some way. I'm not saying those are the signs of Revelation 16. But what I am saying is that we're beginning to see the, um, the table being set, the process getting into motion with all these earthquakes that are intensifying, the sun that's getting more uh, irritating, the dead birds, the dead fish, the dead cows, the wars, the rumors of wars, the conflicts in the Middle East, all of these issues, all of these signs were recognized by Jesus Christ in Matthew 24 and 3 through 8. There's a lot to talk about it. You need to give your life to Jesus. You can send me a personal message right now and title it, I want to be saved, I want to be saved, I want to be saved. I'll be back to you in a minute. In Jesus' name.